For the Pledge of Allegiance, it is our distinct honor to welcome Corporal Michael Blair. Corporal Blair has served in the U.S. Marine Corps for four and a half years and has served two tours of duty in Iraq. Corporal Blair was seriously wounded by an IED in Iraq in May of last year. He continues to receive medical care at the Bethesda Naval, uh, Naval Hospital. He is a recipient of the Purple Heart. With him today are his brave wife, Delissa, and their 20-month-old daughter, Mirabella. We are proud to welcome this brave soldier to lead us in the pledge. Thank you. Thank you very much. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, National Catholic Prayer Breakfast Board member, Leonard Leo. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this nation is blessed abundantly any time an individual realizes and selflessly embarks upon his vocation. George W. Bush's faith, virtue, and love of country brought him to the presidency at a time when his commitment to freedom, the rule of law, and the individual worth and dignity of every person are very much in demand here and throughout the world. No words can express how fortunate we are. Please join me in welcoming the President of the United States. Thank you all. Thanks for having me. Thank you all. Please be seated. Thank you all. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. It's good to be with you. You know how to make a Methodist feel right at home? <laughs> I noticed that this year's breakfast uh, was the Friday after Lent. <laughs> you can eat your bacon with a good conscience. <laughs> and the priest can relax. <laughs> I appreciate the opportunity to be with you, I really do. I, I, I thank you for having this prayer breakfast. The prayer breakfasts show uh, the true strength of our nation. I, um, I am honored that people uh, say to, to me and Laura, we pray for you. 
it means a lot. A prayerful nation is a strong nation. A prayerful nation is a nation uh, the true strength of which lies in the hearts of the men and women of our nation. Our Declaration of Independence states that our freedom, re freedom rests on self-evident truths about the dignity of the human person. Throughout our nation's history, Catholic Americans have embraced, sustained, and given their lives to defend these truths. This morning, we give thanks for the blessings of freedom. We ask Almighty God to guide us as we renew our founding promise of liberty and justice for all. I'm sorry Laura couldn't be here. She is, uh, she is by far the best representative of our family. <laughs> Thank you for praying for her. I appreciate my friend Leonard Leo for inviting me. I thank the leaders of the National Catholic Prayer Breakfast. I'm honored to be in the presence of Archbishop Donald Worrell. I have known the Archbishop for quite a while. I appreciate his strong and firm dedication to making sure every child in America gets a good education. to be here with Archbishop Samby, the uh, apost apostolic nuncio to the United States. <laughs> I appreciate the members of the Catholic clergy. I'm honored to be here with two members of our Supreme Court, the Chief Justice John Roberts and Justice Sam Alito. thank the members of my administration who have joined us, particularly our Cabinet Secretary of the Department of Veterans Affairs, Jim Nicholson and Suzanne. Thank you for joining us. I am in awe of people like Corporal Michael Blair, United States Minister. thank the members of our armed services who are here today. I appreciate the members of Congress who've joined us. Thanks for letting me come by to say hello. <laughs> of, the 50, <laughs> of the 56 men who signed our Declaration of Independence, only one was a Catholic, Charles Carroll. In 1776, Carroll was one of the wealthiest men in America. Because he was a Catholic, he could not vote or hold public office in his native Maryland. John Adams noted that Carroll's wealth and patriotism marked him for special vengeance if the revolution were to fail. That's why when Carroll added his name to the declaration, one bystander quipped, there goes a few million. <laughs> Carroll was willing to risk those millions because he knew that something far more precious was at stake, freedom. He believed that the self-evident truths of our Declaration would lead to religious as well as civil liberty. He knew that an America where people were free to worship God as they saw fit would be a land where Catholics would flourish and prosper. And he understood that whatever Americans' failings, our founding promise would always be a source of hope and renewal for our country. And at this breakfast, we commit ourselves to renewing that promise in our time. 